Today I'll be explaining a story of a film, called, The Pursuit of Happiness. This is the true story of Chris Gardner, which might just inspire you to do something meaningful with your life. The story begins in 1981, where we meet Chris Gardner in San Francisco. He invests his entire life savings into purchasing portable bone density scanners, but fate does not favor him. The machines fail miserably in the market, selling his machines becomes increasingly difficult, leading to a gradual deterioration of his financial condition. Along with his wife Linda and their son Christopher, resides in a rented apartment. With Christopher's school fees, rent, and numerous other expenses, the burden now falls heavily on his wife. Because of this, the relationships between these two begin to deteriorate. Neither Chris nor his wife are to blame for the financial situation though, they are both struggling immensely. Chris is working hard and will have to sell for scanners per month to sustain their household, but it's tough to sell even one scanner these days. Then one day, when Chris is on the phone with a client, he sees some amazing cars stopping in front of him. A man gets out, and Chris watches him with curiosity. Unable to contain himself, Chris asks the man, I got two questions, what do you do for a living and how do you manage it all? The man points towards a building and says, I am a share broker. When Chris looks towards the building, he sees everyone coming out of it with smiles on their faces, which are missing from Chris's life, which has almost disappeared. And then, he decides that he too will become a share broker. He goes home and tells his wife that he's thinking of quitting this job and finding another. His wife agrees, saying that it's a good idea, especially since no one wants to buy their scanners. He says he's thinking of becoming a share broker. His wife looks at him in surprise and says, you don't want to become an astronaut. In fact, his wife has absolutely no confidence in him, she mocks him in a way. Chris doesn't like hearing this at all. His wife decides that she won't stay with Chris anymore and she leaves home with their son. Because of this Chris got very angry. He meets his wife and tells her that if she wants to leave, she can, but their son will stay with him. Because Chris loves his son very much, and he also knows that legally he can't take his son from his wife. But during this time, his wife gets a job in Europe, which requires his wife to go to Europe, and Chris gets his son back. Chris, who lives in the house, hasn't paid rent for several months, and one day his landlord comes to him and says, you haven't paid rent, I need to paint my house, vacate my house. Chris asks for a few days grace, but the owner insists, you paint the house, and in return, you can stay for one more week. Meanwhile, Chris applies for a job in the share market, and the next day, he has an interview. When he's painting his house, right then the police arrive and arrest him because he hasn't paid the parking tickets. Now, he's in custody. He requests the police a lot to let him go, but they say, according to our rules, we can't release you before 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. The next morning, when was released from the police station, he ran straight to the interview because he didn't have the bus fare. His clothes are covered in paint, and he waits in the lobby for his turn. Suddenly, a girl comes in calling his name. Chris Gardner doesn't have the courage to stand up in such clothes. He thinks for a while and then stands up and follows the girl, where there is a panel sitting to take his interview. They all are surprised to see Chris, no one has ever come for an interview wearing such dirty clothes. Before they can say anything, Chris starts making a story, saying, I've been thinking for the past half an hour why I came here wearing these clothes, but I couldn't make up a story. The truth is that I was arrested last night because I didn't pay the parking ticket. Everyone is shocked because they are all well-settled people, and they can't understand these things at all. For them, paying parking tickets is a very small matter. Now, they start questioning Chris. They ask him, how far have you studied? Chris says, until 12th grade, and I was first in my class. Then they ask, how many students were there in your class? Chris says, eight students. When they hear this, they start looking at each other's faces because being first among eight students is not a big deal. Chris says, I was also first in the Navy, and there were 21 people in it. However, nobody is convinced by Chris's words. He has almost failed in the interview, and before the decision is announced, he says to everyone, I want to say something. If someone asks me a question and I don't know the answer, so I clearly admit that I don't know. But I can say with certainty, that I know how to find the answer, and I keep searching until I find it. This impresses everyone a little, and now, the most senior person here tells Chris, if a man comes to me for an interview without a shirt, and I give him the job, why? Grace says, maybe he was wearing very impressive pants. Upon hearing these, everyone starts laughing, because it's a very good answer. After this answer, Chris is selected. 
In this same panel, there is a man named Jack, whom Chris already knows. Chris tells him, I'll let you know after thinking whether I'll join the internship or not. Hearing this, Jack is surprised and says to Chris, for the past few days, you've been acting crazy for this job, and today when you've been selected, you're saying that you'll let me know after thinking about it. Chris says, I didn't know that this was an internship. Now my financial condition completely changed. Actually, this internship is where 20 people had been chosen, and all of them are taught about the job for six months. After six months, the one selected from these 20 will get the job. That's why Chris is completely confused. He thinks whether he should join this job or not. Jack says to him, you have until tomorrow morning. If you don't give me an answer by tomorrow morning, I'll hire someone else in your place. Chris goes home and decides that he will join this internship. He then sells his scanners and collects enough money that he now has a budget for six months. He also shifts his house and starts living with his son in a small house. One evening, when he comes home from the office, he receives a letter from the bank and the government, stating that he has not paid his taxes, so all the money in his bank account has been seized by the government. This changes Chris's entire world. Now he has no good way to earn money. He also calls the government, but it doesn't benefit him. A few more days pass, and now he can't even pay the rent for this house. One night, when he comes back with his son, he sees his belongings outside. He doesn't know where to go. He has his son with him, his belongings, and no money in his pocket. So, he goes to his friend who had borrowed some dollars from him before. He knocks on his friend's door and says, return my money. But his friend doesn't open the door because he doesn't want to return the money. Chris is completely hopeless now. He has his belongings and his little son with him. He doesn't know what to do. He takes his belongings and his son to the metro station and wonders where to go now. He doesn't have a home or money. His son, Christopher, asks where are we going. Chris says, I don't know. I don't have a place to stay or money to spend. Just then, an idea strikes Chris's mind. He plays a game with his son, where he tells him to visualize things. His son starts playing along, and in the game, he takes him to the metro station toilet and locks the door from inside. There, Chris spreads some papers on the floor and sat down and takes his son in his lap. He knows that he will have to spend the night in this toilet. Although people knock on the door from outside, but Chris doesn't open it. Tears fill his eyes. Chris has never felt so helpless in his life. The next morning, after dropping his son at school, he goes to work on his job. After coming back, he picks up his son from school, and he goes to find a shelter in a church. But the lady told him, this church is only for females and children. Chris loves his son very much, so he doesn't want to leave him. He goes to another church where he finds a place. But if he has to stay in church every day, he will have to come here on time, because only first few people in the line are given shelter in this church and the rest don't, because there is limited space. And now, Chris's real struggle begins. He has the office until 7 o'clock, but he decides to work until 5 o'clock. That's why he doesn't drink water throughout the day, because if he drinks water, he will have to go to the toilet, which will waste time, and he won't be able to finish his work by 5 o'clock. That's why he works continuously throughout the day. As Chris's days pass, he works at the office until 5 o'clock. He then takes his son to school and then stands in line for church. He still has a scanner left, which he wants to sell to earn some money. One day, he takes his son to play catch nearby. Although his son is playing, but Chris is broken inside. He tells his son with a broken heart, never let anyone tell you that you can't do something. When people can't do something themselves, they want to tell you that you can't either. If you have dreams in life, you must pursue them. If you want to achieve something in life, go for it and grab it. That's it. Actually, Chris speaks these words to his son straight from his heart. He also wants to do something in his life for which he is struggling. With the bone scanner left, he goes to a hospital to see a doctor. The doctor wants to buy the scanner, but when Chris gives him a demo, the machine doesn't work. This incident had break Chris's heart because he has completely run out of money now. He goes back to the church, and then he checks the machine at night. He finds out that a part of it is damaged, but he doesn't have money to buy that part. He takes his son to a hospital where he sells his blood. After selling it, he gets some money, and with that money, he buys the part. When he comes back and fits the part into the machine, the machine starts working, which makes him very happy. He then earns some money by selling the machine, and today he doesn't go to church with his son. He rents a good room where they both spend their nights. After many days, they watch television and fall asleep there at night. Meanwhile, Chris works hard. He makes calls all day, personally meets people. When he comes back from office, he also studies, because his exam is coming up. Actually, in this internship, there's also an exam for a theory that is very important to pass. 
Out of the remaining 19 people with Chris, all of them are highly qualified. Chris was only one who was 12th pass. Chris studies very hard, which is why he finishes the exam first. There was another interviewer with him, who is going with him after taking the exam. When they talk about the exam, the man asks Chris how his exam was. Chris says it was easy, but there was some inconvenience for the AC question. He is surprised to hear about AC questions, because he hasn't seen AC questions, which was the back of the exam paper. He rushes towards the exam room, but maybe now there is no benefit to it. And now the day comes when the exam result is going to come, where one man will be selected for the job from all these. One by one everyone is called, and when Chris is called, there are the same people who took his interview first. In the ring, who is the most senior of all, he says, today you have worn a very nice shirt. Chris says, today is my last day here. I thought why not wear a good shirt? He asks, if you have to wear this shirt tomorrow too, would you like to wear it? Upon hearing this, tears came to Chris's eyes, because he has been struggling for the last six months, about which no one knows. He doesn't have a home, he doesn't have enough money to survive, and he is responsible for his son. Chris says that yes. It's mean, he has got this job. The senior of the interviewees asks to Chris, was it easy for you? Chris says, no sir. It wasn't easy for me at all. And now everything is fine in Chris's life, and at the end of this story, we are shown that Chris is going with his son. And then a man crosses from there, and this is the real Chris Gardner, whose real-life story served as the inspiration for the entire movie. After a few years, Chris quits his job and opens his own company, which he later sells for millions of dollars. Today, Chris is a very rich man, and he is also a motivational speaker, motivating people with his life story, so that people can be successful in their life like him. So, this was the whole story of Pursuit of Happiness, hoping that you liked this story.